You're listening to the Geekscape Network. Time to fire up the VCR. This one's my favorite. Welcome to Analog Jones in the Temple Film. I'm Steve. And I'm Matt. And this is a VHS podcast that looks at the box art trailer and behind the scenes. And this is it. Matt is going off on a Jeebus film. Jesus January. It's only going to be one of them. But Matt, introduce the film that you sort of kind of asked for. I did. I was like, okay, I know we're wrapping up. I think it would be cool if we did one more Jesus movie. I'll allow it this time. (laughs) Um, And we ended up doing, and you picked this, 2000's Tribulation. One man is about to discover. What else did he say? An evil looking for revenge. You're going to run away again, aren't you? Dark forces waiting to strike. And a serpent plotting to rule. And it was given unto me to make war on the saints. But before Tom Canborough can realize the truth, we will beat him this time. Beat who? God. He is thrown into oblivion. And into the great tribulation. Cloud 10 Pictures proudly presents Gary Busey. Changed by what, Eileen? My life! My mind! Howie Mandel. And I believed it. All of it. Margot Kidder. It is real. All of it is real. And Nick Mancuso. Do you think that I care about them? In the soul-winning, explosive thriller, Tribulation. Prepare for the future. Escape the Great Tribulation. Prepare to believe. I'm going home. Tribulation. You know it's faith when it's all you have. That's right. Or AKA Apocalypse 3 Tribulation. I think there are a few other titles. So apparently when I was looking into this, this is the third film of a quadrilogy. I don't know what you call them. Oh, boy. (laughs) Yeah. Well, I had no idea. I'll have to go to Wikipedia to get all three of them uh, because I'm not ready for this Gary Busey led quadrilogy. Actually, I should say he's only in one of them and I have not confirmed. Well, okay. so I, I look up on Wikipedia and it says Apocalypse Film Series. So I guess this is real. We had Apocalypse, which came out in 1998. Apocalypse 2 Revelation with star Jeff Fahey. The first one, they didn't get any major stars. So the second one, they pulled in Jeff Fahey and Nick Manacuso, who's in this one. And then in 2000, we get Apocalypse 3 Tribulation with Gary Busey, Margot Kidder, and Holly Mandel. And then number four has, it's called Apocalypse 4 Judgment. And it's got Jessica Steen in it. Corbin Burnson and Mr. T. Wow. Not making that up. Mr. T (laughs) is in number four or apocalypse Four judgment. I'm not judging him. You know, got to make your money. Yeah. I mean, I, I hope that this was paycheck movies for the people involved in this. We have picked a doozy to go on, uh, out on here. What a spectacularly awesome, awful, awful, awful film we're watching (laughs) this is truly one where we're going to put it in the old vcr and figure it out uh because (laughs) this film was not fun to watch for the most part but i think it's going to be fun to dissect and figure out what's going on there's several questions that i have going into this thing for for sure (laughs) all right so let's look at the front here we've got margot kidder to the left Gary Busey looking very bored in the center. And then Howie Mandel to the right, the mustache and 
you know, chin goatee Howie Mandel looking a little confused to the right. And it says from the makers of Left Behind the movie Tribulation, one man will need the end of the world to find all that he has lost. Starring Gary Busey, Margot Kidder and Howie Mandel. I'm not going to read the back, mostly because this VHS was so bad, I couldn't even rip it and give it to Matt. We had to both watch this on Tubi and endure all the really horribly timed ads. Uh, And now has fucked up my algorithm forever. (laughs) Yes, yes. (laughs) I know, mine too. (laughs) The first film, though. Oh, no. So it said, we suggest this film afterwards. And it was like, you know, some action film. The the second movie that it uh, suggested I watch was the Greg Kinnear starring Christian film when he was uh, running out of paycheck movies to do Uh, i'm sorry greg kinnear unless you're a real christian then i'm sorry that you decided to do that i have a feeling it's more the paycheck even if he is or isn't i think he just hasn't been up to anything else recently so he's kind of got to take whatever's offered to him yeah I, i don't even know what it was called but i just saw it it was starring greg kinnear when a man's blah 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 and he must find God. And I saw that at the end. I go, oh, shit. I'm getting God films on Tubi. Woo. I'm going to have to really fuck this algorithm up and go really super weird. What's weirder than Christian films? <sighs> if this movie is a prime example, nothing. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Fair enough. Nothing is weirder than Christian films. Wow. <laughs> yeah. This this is something, folks. Um, so let's just tear right into this. And now, our feature presentation. First question, we open up on this family having breakfast, you know, around this table. A lot of people. Uh, It shows, you know, the main character played by our man, Gary Busey. And he was going through his whole, like, Hollywood doesn't like me because I'm a Christian now face, uh, which is completely untrue. I feel like these people just do this when they're, they're running out of scripts. Yeah, when their careers stall a little bit. And even Gary Busey, the great Gary Busey ran into this. Uh, I mean, he was in his late 40s, almost 50s. Uh, He just got over his drug overdose in 96. Uh, He had definitely gained a shit ton of weight because he stopped doing cocaine all the time. He stalled. And now he lets everyone know that he's a Christian and he's in a Christian film. And, you know, I I hope that paycheck was nice because, wow, what a role. You know, brought brought to you with the general Gary Busey intensity. However, it still feels like with that, he's reading lines. So it is a combination of what seems like someone who hasn't done their homework, but also wants to like really like act the shit out of it, but doesn't know what he's saying. (laughs) It's a very, very strange performance. No, it's almost like he read lines five minutes before he did, you know, they said action. Because there's a couple times, like, I think he just ad-libbed. Yeah, because it's still this Buseyan over-the-top reading of these things, but it doesn't seem like there's any conviction what he's saying. He's just sort of yelling them or weird pauses, these weird, intense looks. It's very, very, it's a dichotomy for sure. He doesn't know what the script is, but he wants to give it intensely. One of the lines that he gives is like perfectly Busey is anybody who starts a sentence with UFO, extraterrestrial, alien or Jesus Christ. I don't have to listen to the rest because I know what's coming. <laughs> I was like, Busey wrote that. Like he, he took something that they said. and He said, this sucks. I got it. Just just talk. I'll, I'll fill in the rest. But then there's other times where he's like you're saying there's there's weird pauses, like almost like he's trying to remember his line. I don't think Gary Busey was memorizing his lines in this. I think he was memorizing like keywords and almost like the keyword came to him and he's just like, where am I going with this? Oh, I remember. I remember. Yes. But, it, but at the same time, like how am I going to choose scenery with this line? I don't remember. <laughs> how can I choose? Also, how can I choose scenery with these horribly written lines? Ugh, what a, what a terrible script. I mean, like, the parts in which I definitely closed my eyes during some of the movie and heard it, I was just like, oof, what is it? What are they saying here? Everybody, like every other word out of somebody's mouth is God, this or Jesus, this. But like no one's ever really saying anything. <laughs> yeah. At one time, 
uh, Busey and Margot Kidder are arguing. And he goes, I hear what you're saying. She goes, no, 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 you don't. You're not hearing what the word of God or yada, yada. And, and then he just says, he's just like, listen, you can sit here and say this stuff, whatever you want. But, you know, like no one's listening. She goes, that's because you have to open your ears or something like that in this big dramatic line. And I was like, what the fuck did you just say? Like, <laughs> I don't like it didn't make any sense. And and what I'm saying is not the correct lines. I'm just saying they were in a dramatic argument in front of a microwave because I kept staring at the microwave. And I'm like, I wonder if that time's correct. You know, like I was looking in the background, creating my own story to counteract the shit storm in front of me of like two good actors with shit lines just doing their best well i think and i'm glad you brought up the microwave here (laughs) i think even worse than the script which is bottom of the barrel one of the worst scripts that we've talked about like awful even worse than the script is the directing in this movie oh my god i can't see anybody when they're talking they're looking at each other but like there, yeah, the center of the frame will be a microwave, and then, but they're talking to each other, so I'm not even paying attention to what they're saying. <laughs> I know, I looked and at the microwave. I'm like, what is this fucking frame? Like, what am I looking at? And it, it is several scenes. There's a scene where Gary Busey is talking to his wife in a room where they are talking for what seems like five minutes at least, maybe even more. <laughs> like they're, But there is no close-ups, and they are filmed sort of from the side but like where the room is also still pretty much in frame as well and they're talking to each other and the way it's lit they're not even really lit the background is more lit than they are and they're just talking back and forth back and forth and i'm like what is happening (laughs) i know exact scene you're talking about so this whole thing is gary Busey, which i mean i guess to use his real character's name is i think it's it's tom Tom is talking to his wife, Susie, and I guess they're having they they got married late in life. And I guess this is like their 10 year anniversary about to come up and he's about to give her a better ring. Anyway, he like grabs her after making a joke of like he didn't remember her anniversary or their anniversary. And he grabs her. And instead of looking at the shot and reshooting it, they go with the original one, which has Gary Busey half off frame to the right. (laughs) And she is almost center framed, but not. And then her head goes about 60% up frame. And then you see the entire arch of like the archway of like walking from the kitchen to the living room. And that is what is lit. Not Gary Busey making a dramatic like joke or like, I really love you, which is also off, off, you know, the frame. Now, now maybe they were shooting wide frame and then they said, oh shit, we got to go to four, three. I don't know. But anyway, either way, that wouldn't work because she would still be centered and you need them both centered at least. And they're not lit. The room is lit. They're not lit at all. (laughs) So whoever did the lighting lit someone in front of the wall and never decided to move the lights before the actors got on because before the actors get on you you like check their lighting and everything like that and make sure you know maybe a little bit of makeup or whatever i don't i just think the director shot and and then no one said anything like um yeah so they're not lit uh maybe we should get some coverage of them talking because they do not because this entire scene of this whole five minute conversation goes back and forth and the camera never cuts once. (laughs) That is the thing that killed me on this. This was shot by someone who did shitty TV. They were probably the B director, the B center photographer somewhere on some shitty program where they were doing just like fillers and then decided one day, I'm going to direct and do the cinematography for Christian films because at least I can get my name out there. And it's terrible. That's my guess. That is my guess. I don't know. What do you, do you think I have any, am I close to the bullseye at all? I feel like, yeah, but you are because it does like, I guess sort of the, the overall lighting scheme and look of the movie is very 2000s TV movie. Absolutely. It totally feels like this could be a made for, upn or a made for tnt original you know it it kind of looks like that but then yeah like i do think 
he was just like, all right, whatever, fuck it. I'm just going to fuck off in these Christian movies because like the shots we're talking about where they're half lit or whatever, or, or the, or something else is sort of main focus other than the characters happens the entire movie. I mean, it, it could be the beginning, middle, end. you will find a scene that looks like this. So this is totally a director who either just has no idea what he's doing or does not give a fuck. But yes, I guess the general look of it is kind of TV movie. Okay, I can tolerate that your lighting is a little off. I understand sometimes some of the crew doesn't show up. You know, you have a bad shoot and everything like that. You do your best with what knowledge you have or the people have around you. But one thing I cannot excuse is framing the actors. How the fuck? I mean, because there's two actors. You're not framing like an action scene here. Like I I could understand that, you know, people are moving around and you lose the frame or you lose the lighting. There's two people talking. How do you do that? Never once do you think maybe I'll get it over the shoulder so I can actually see the person who's talking right now. Never once do they ever think that. (laughs) Because she's talking and it's the back of her head. (laughs) And I'm like, what am I supposed to be like looking at right now as I'm listening to this awful, awful dialogue? And it keeps happening. It doesn't matter if it's a shot with the cult leader guy in Gary Busey or if it's Howie Mandel in Gary Busey. It doesn't matter. If it's a tour, we ain't seeing faces. <laughs> I don't know what that choice was. Like, it seems like it's laziness because it is long scenes where the camera just does not move. You know, it's just it's awful directing. It's bad directing. <laughs> yeah, it's either bad directing or it's you don't have the actors long enough. But if you're good at your job, I think you could convince them that like, hey, Stay a little bit longer. Let's get a few more shots because we don't want to make you look bad because this is going to make you look bad because a lot of people aren't going to look at this film and be like, oh, the directing's bad. They're going to be like Gary Busey and this Sherry Miller is awful. But really, it's that's a director's decision. Exactly. Exactly. Like, it, it, but the viewer, the normal mainstream viewer is going to put it on these actors. I mean, like yeah. e- even to say like, Charlie Band, our buddy that we talk about so much, has directed Gary Vc in the Ginger Dead Man movie, which came out four years after this. And th- and they probably had Gary Vc for one day. There's more coverage of Gary Vc in that movie than there is in this movie that he's supposed to be the star of. Like, <laughs> like that's even more competently made than this thing is. And that movie's a lot more enjoyable, and it has a lot more mistakes. <laughs> exactly. Like... This just, yeah, I I don't know what the framing choices are here. I don't know what the performance choices are here. I don't know what the lighting choices are here. That's why I have to blame the director, because these are things that at least one of these things could have been fixed by a director who kind of knew what they were doing. Well, I think a competent director, they can't fix everything, but they can fix a few things that you can like shoestring a film together where you don't notice you know, how bad a script is or how bad a lighter is, or even the cinematographer, which should be working directly with the director. But, you know, sometimes smaller films have a cinematographer that's coming in half the time because uh, they're doing something else. I, I you know, I've, I've read about this where the director's kind of just doing both jobs. Yeah, it's just paycheck things for them as well. They're not, you know, totally invested in the thing. All right, we've covered these people enough. Let's get into the story. Gary Busey is a detective... Uh, his wife, they're having their 10 year anniversary. So let's look at this Gary Busey and this woman that he's married to named Sherry Miller is the actress. They're celebrating their 10 year anniversary. On the other end, we have Sherry's brother played by Howie Mandel living in the basement. Then we have Margot Kidder, which is Gary Busey's sister and Gary Busey's brother, all living in the same house. And I text you, do we have any idea why all these grownups are living in the same house? Because I thought I missed a line of dialogue. What do you say? Which I also was like, I thought I missed something. I was like, was it ever explained why these five adults are living under the same McMansion house? Like, I would say they're swingers, but they're all family. So I hope not. (laughs) Well, it also appears that the wife, Sherry Miller's brother and Gary Busey's brother don't have jobs. They're just living in the basement on the couch. 
And in fact, when Gary Busey was about to, you know, he was showing his brother the ring that he's going to give to Sherry. He's just like, wow, that's great. I hope to have something like that one day. And I'm like, okay, so you don't have a job. You're clearly in your mid forties, maybe early fifties, and you're living on his couch. And Howie Mandel has to at least be in his forties. What the fuck is happening to this family? (laughs) Yeah. And no one addresses that this household is weird. No one no. even bats an eye. Everybody's like, what's your sister up to? You know, like it is so normal that these five 40 to 50 year old adults are all living under the same roof. This could be a real world if it wasn't for Jesus. <laughs> yeah. And then on top of this, Howie Mandel is playing a, I don't know, a, a person with some type. They don't actually define his mental Ill- illness, quote unquote. He he kind of looks like he might be like he like sees people, hears voices and stuff like that. But they actually don't go into that. Um, that's just something the doctor says to him at one time. Are you hearing voices again? And I was like, huh? So he's schizophrenic, but they don't go into that. But anyway, well, they don't need to go into it because Jesus is going to help them. <laughs> yeah. Well, and he's got this crazy story because he's listening to this guy. He's like, if we all think as one, we can do whatever we want. And he tells this crazy, you know, like off the hinge monkey story about bananas, how like one monkey learned how to wash a banana and then all the monkeys learned how to wash a banana, even though they didn't know who originally learned how to wash the banana. And I was like, what the fuck are we talking about? (laughs) Yes, this is the rantings of a madman who, yeah, is probably like schizophrenic, but they're going to, they don't believe in science for sure. Cause when he isn't admitted into the hospital, they're like, he just needs his family. <laughs> oh yeah. Cause his sister, Sherry was just like, I don't want you pumping him full of whatever you think helps him. All right. We're going to take him home and take care of him. And I'm like, so you're going to do nothing and expect a change. You're going to pray the schizophrenia away. <laughs> yeah. And then Gary Busey is the only person who's just like, uh, you did your best. How about we let the doctors have a chance? And they're like, they're just going to put drugs in him and calm him down. We can't, we don't want him calm. And I was like, wait, what? <laughs> this is, this is science denial on another level. <laughs> yeah, They're not specifically going, fuck your science and fuck your medicine. It's more like they're coming up with excuses not to have this man medicated, but also like, treated because at one time they say something about a therapist and like there is like a couple people you know like the sister both sisters you know are like oh a therapist <laughs> <laughs> like you know what they're gonna do to him tom and he's like yeah they're they're gonna give him help and they're like nah you know what those <laughs> therapists do what like if they would have said like we've tried this before and it made him worse, I would understand. They didn't do that. They made it seem like this is like a novel concept. I don't uh <laughs> I like there's so much like of them living together and then yeah, like the treatment of this. It does feel like I'm like, did I miss a movie before this that sort of like explains what's going on here? <laughs> but even though there is a movie before this, it does not feature any of these characters, so I am like totally lost as to yeah why they are treating this poor man like this and we haven't even gotten in to the crazy psychic group that is putting these commercials on television and these dudes are the most hilarious psychics you know like they're all like one's bald and he's just like "Ah, the dialogue oh my god i wish i had this vhs ripped i wish it worked this dialogue is so atrocious. We're going to take your freedoms away. And no God can help you as they like smash a door that, you know, like had stained glass on it. And then the cross crumbles. And I'm like, what the fuck? <laughs> yeah. So with like these like programs coming in, it's obviously like very like they live to the point at which like there are VR goggles that are our sunglasses basically in this one. But they're the, it's reverse where it's like if you get the VR glasses put on a put on you, you're gonna believe in the devil and you have to get a six 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 tattoo on your hand like you're going into a bar underage or something. <laughs> oh my gosh! Yeah, so the goggles say like one nation or something, and they put them on and they go to a room and they go 
to the devil played by Nick Man Nick Mancuso. But what you're saying is one of the most hilarious parts because the devil marks people to know who's on his side. The all powerful devil needs a mark. And the mark he chooses is 666. On your hand. <laughs> it's like very casual and like, you know, it, at least in the omen, it was buried under some hair on your head. You know, <laughs> like this is just like a stamp on your hand that you watched the video in the in the VR glasses. <laughs> now, Tom, our main character played by Gary Busey, would never, never allow this to happen to the world around him. But he's not there to stop it. So he is knocked out uh, somehow. I think he gets into a car accident and then he wakes up in a random torture hospital where he's been in a coma and he wakes up with long hair and a beard. And I just want to hear Matt describe the awesomeness that is this long hair and a beard. It got to this point in the movie and I was literally sitting there on the couch like basically browning out and being like <laughs> what the fuck is going on in this movie <laughs> like the point at which he goes into a coma and then it goes into sort of this future world where everyone has been hypnotized or whatever by the devil is such a jump and honestly like within the confines of this movie happens so fast that i was like it was almost like breakneck because like so much of the beginning is moving so slow it's a lot of like conversations and like those awful one-on-ones like you were talking about. Then all of a sudden it's like Gary Busey is in a coma. He's got this ridiculous beard and hair. He's stumbling around this. Yeah. Like 2000s tech horror hospital. And then like, then he doesn't have the hair and beard anymore. And he's just walking around a world that has devil people in it. And I'm like, how did this all happen in like five minutes? <laughs> My favorite part of him walking around in that hospital is He's running for his life from these agents, yet he has time to find a room and then they cut and he comes out of the room with a towel wiping off his face going, ooh, ow, like he just shaved and cut all of his hair. I'm not kidding. They show him running for his life, cut away, go to another portion of the story, come back and he's shaven going, ooh, ow. Looking exactly like he did earlier in the movie. He knows how to cut his hair perfectly <laughs> but he's running for his life and he still decides you know i should probably be clean shaven for this i need to look like gary bc real quick i can't be looking ridiculous here <laughs> well i'm wondering if they had it you know longer in the script and he said this itches way too much let's just you know no let's let's do this here because <laughs> it would have been perfect if he would have ran out of the hospital with the the long hair and the beard and then went back to his brother who then shaved him and cut his hair and then he could sit there and describe to him what's happening in the world that's how you do exposition you have a reason for it not in this film. No, it's it, I cannot stress enough how just like shift this movie takes in this section. It's insane. Yes. And this is the shift where Margot Kidder just disappears. Oh, yeah, she's Margo's dead. Just like I'm not in the movie anymore. <laughs> so I'm going to give my theory to that. We were reading in the IMD trivia that Howie Mandel and Margot Kidder didn't know this was a Christian film until well into it and were not happy. Or at least it says she was not happy. My theory is she got to a certain point. She knew this was a Christian film. There's no fucking way you look at the script and not know it. But I'm thinking she got a certain point in this in filming and she goes, this is awful. I'm leaving. And they decided to cut around her and then just delete her from the script. However, they're not deleting any of the earlier stuff where she's talking to her brother in their swinger house at all. Like, that's all still there. But then it's just like, oh, she's dead. She's just not in it anymore. I That's think it. I, I think your theory is right. Like it's like uh, they caught on. They probably just either had their lines delivered to them and not the full script, or they didn't read the script at all. And yeah, I think you're right. Once they kind of got wind of what was going on with this movie, they were probably not happy. Even though both of them, just like Gary Busey, probably needed the work and probably needed the money. You know, I could see Margot Kidder signing on and then talking shit after she knew it was bad and just leaving because, you know, she didn't need the money. She's got money from other things, but, you know, people like to keep working. I think Howie Mandel, Howie Mandel, uh, Howie Mandel was desperate at this time. I mean, this is about the time when he was about to quit Hollywood before he find uh, what is the deal show before he got on to America's 
deal with no deal. Yeah, and then he gets on to America's Got Talent, and now he's just like worth sixty million dollars. I mean, what a dramatic change for Holly Mandel. He went from almost quitting Hollywood to a guy who's worth sixty million dollars. I mean, good for him. This is like two thousand. This is post like Bobby's World. This is post his comedy. This is post any of him sort of top lining any movies or anything like that. But yeah, two thousand five is Deal or No Deal. So he is in totally like a dead zone here. He needs the work. Yeah, he was talking about how uh, he got off, like, I remember him telling the story about he got one episode of Monk, or two episodes, and people started to see that he could actually still act. And he's like, yeah, but no, I never got any calls. So he was going to quit, and then I guess he either did the American Deal or No Deal or the Canadian Deal or No Deal and decided, you know, his career's probably better as a host. And then, I mean... The rest is history. He just, America loved him. He was back in the sea, shaved his head and he's back in the sphere. Yeah, but he was saying like he would take any TV series possible. Uh, so I never heard him talk about this, but I guarantee you, was just like, okay, fine. A starring role in a Christian film, whatever. And then I could see him telling other people being a little embarrassed. Like, I didn't know it was a Christian film. Truly, they he didn't. He may have just said yes and didn't even look at the script. Yeah. They may have just pitched it as a they live sort of apocalyptic rapture kind of story, but then like never fully, you know, divulged how much they were going to be talking about God in it. And yeah, and how he's not in a ton, ton of the movie. So I could kind of see him not fully, fully knowing. Yeah, I, I could see that, too. Like you sign on to something just to get a gig and you think it's like a, uh, you know, post-apocalyptic movie especially during this time period in 2000 and then you get to set the script has changed a little bit and you're like holy shit this is a christian film yeah because like 2000 everybody with with the impending 1999 turning into y2k turning into 2000 the apocalypse movies were kind of all the rage again especially in this like direct-to-video sphere this was this was hot property this was everybody was doing one of these but yeah, yeah, some of them sneakily were pretty Christian. <laughs> <laughs> yep. I mean, Gary Busey refuses to look into the goggles from the devil. He refuses to change. Uh, so he's he's stumbling around this world, holding guns very awkwardly uh, throughout <laughs> the entire film. Like, it's almost like he tried to hold a gun exactly what you're not supposed to do. Like, I've been through gun training being from Missouri. Uh, and don't do what he's doing, folks. <laughs> like at one time, he's like walking through a room, asking people questions, pointing at them with his hand on the trigger. And I'm like, no, 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 <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> but it's funny to watch. It's like he didn't give a shit. I don't think he did. Obviously, I really don't think he knows what's going on. Like if from scene to scene ever like his clueless walking around the uh new world or whatever like the the hypnotized world he his confusion during that is seriously kind of how he looks throughout the entire when he's delivering lines when he's carrying guns when he's going from scene to scene he looks like he has no idea what's happening <laughs> well the funny thing is howie mandel like disappears for 20 30 minutes of this film and then we find out that gary Busey's brother is working for the devil like directly working for the devil uh and then the devil finds out that gary Busey won't sign on and like takes this personal and at first i thought like oh it's because he's the star but it turns out that everyone who is still alive must believe that the devil is the like leader of some sort and he must get 100% follow, like 100% of the people must follow him so he can defeat God. And I got that out of it. And I was like, well, that seems impossible. So that's why he's trying to kill everyone who won't take the mark. <laughs> it's so weird. And of course, of course, Gary Busey's character is having a crisis of faith. At the beginning of the movie, yeah. he is not. He's the one holding out on religion, it seems like, in the family. He, his wife says he hasn't gone to church in a while with them. He doesn't say that he doesn't necessarily believe, but he's like, I don't necessarily believe either. 
So of course, as this is happening, as as they're trying to turn him or whatever, he's finding his faith as well. Yeah. Oh, well, these Christian films do this all the time that like if they believe in God, everyone else is trying to kill them or persecute them, which is right. just like so extreme. I mean, because you're telling me that like, I don't know, like 30, 40 percent of the world is Christian. And I would say half of the 30, 40 percent probably still go to church or, or some type of devout, whatever you call it. You're telling me you're going to convert all these people. What about all the other religions, by the way? Well, there's a line when Howie Mandel rejoins the movie and essentially just falls out of a tree into the he movie. He literally just um, falls out of a tree. <laughs> and back into the film. And he goes, hey, he I'm like here. <laughs> a nonchalant line where it's never addressed again, but like he sort of has a line where he basically is like, well, every, since everybody believes in God, and then he moves on to whatever statement he's saying, and I'm like, hold on a second. <laughs> That's not necessarily true either, Howie. <laughs> yeah, let's say like 15% of the world doesn't believe in God. So that's a lot of people. Yeah, but Howie's just like, well, since everybody believes in God. Yeah. Just... <laughs> Atheists. We must and... be able to reverse this process, you know, or whatever he's talking about. But like, I was just, I got really hung up on that line because I was like, wait, hold on a second. That is not a true statement at all. <laughs> Uh, tr truth is, it really depends what uh, what group you're talking to. <laughs> yeah, I guess so. I guess so. Right? I, in their world, yeah, everybody believes in God. Whether they practice or not, everybody believes. <laughs> this is the funniest thing. So their whole plan to beat the devil is to travel around in a Scooby-Doo van and intersect their, uh, I, I don't know, like, their waves, their wavelengths of TV sending out all their messages and put in a guy for three or four minutes saying like the devil's bad, you know, all this stuff he's saying is bad. And I'm like, this is your grand plan. Three or four minutes at a time traveling from town to town. And remember they don't interrupt the world's transmission until the end. They're doing it territorial. They, they're also doing the uh, Batman Returns approach of they have recorded of the guy saying like, oh, these people are stupid and I've got them wrapped around my finger. What, you know, whatever. Yes, yes. And that's the way that um, the heat they're able to sort of get people to change their minds. And I, of course, yeah, I remember like the penguin in Batman Returns when I think of that or whatever, like. I got this town wrapped around my stinking cloth, you know, whatever. Yeah. <laughs> and that's exactly what they do. And then, yeah, like basically do like a they live broadcast to the, the different territories. <laughs> well, th yeah, the last one where they're like, blah, 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 Leia. I'm just going to make up her name. Uh, sacrifice her life. But thank God that that contact that recorded stuff was in her eye. And we're finally going to be able to use it. And I'm like, so your entire plan was just an accident. <laughs> <laughs> and they're like, oh, thank God we got this recording of the devil, you know, saying like that he's just using everyone. And then that was the time that they they somehow did nationwide or around the world, I guess. Uh, well, let's be honest. The United States is the only uh, place that matters. So, yeah, that this is being affected. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> so they play it and everyone's just like, oh, you know, that guy's the devil. I ain't going to believe him. So I'm just going to stop. I'm going to erase this tattoo on my hand and move on. And the devil's just like, no, I was defeated. Yeah, he he gives up so quickly. He cuts back in and is like, see, this is all the the talk or whatever that they're going to do to try to make us non-believers. Right? Right? Oh, my God. And it's like, dude. Like, <laughs> yeah, it, they didn't even show you like ratings dropping. Here. You put up no fight. <laughs> I thought they were going to show like, oh, no, our ratings are dropping. And then they'd show like a shitty 2000s, like, you know, like stock ticker where it goes down. Yeah, yeah. Something. Something. They don't show any of that. And he's just like, no, <laughs> damn those kids. And then Gary Busey, obviously, then finding his faith is like, I got to go to church and I got to re-propose to my wife or whatever in another fucking shot where i can't see the main characters <laughs> the last shot of this movie is shrouded in darkness and a tree behind them is lit <laughs> so what they did was 
they put a hole in this like abandoned well it might not have been an abandoned church but they made it appear to be and they clearly put a a crane camera in a hole in a roof and then they pulled away but what they didn't think about was you need to light multiple sections at once because you know you got the crane pulling away so only one spot's going to be lit and i guess they chose the farthest away shot <laughs> And I can't see anything that's going on with the main character. Until you get to the all. roof and you're like, oh, that's a nice roof. <laughs> <laughs> and oh, then they cut God. away. And I'm like, they literally lit like the last 10% of the shot. And the rest is just like, I guess a man in shadow. I'm assuming he's on his knees praying to God. You know, the, the crucifix and everything. But it's so dark. Yes, I have no idea what's happening. Luckily, you can hear Gary Busey. Uh, <laughs> so. and, and then, of course, it has to end with a Christian rock Duran Duran kind of ripoff song. <laughs> that at first I was like, is this a real song? And then they start singing about Jesus. And I was like, oh, no, this is just <laughs> this is just some church rock. Yeah, this was when Gary Busey was going through the whole Christian thing, you know, like Hollywood. You know, I'm I'm happy to tell Hollywood I'm Christian and everything like that. But even I wonder if he, like, in the last shot, just got up and started walking away. And they're like, no, no, you're not done yet. And he goes, no, I'm done. No, we're done here. <laughs> <laughs> I always say it. Like, the thing that's so funny about these Christian movies is that so many of them are so poorly made. So, like, horribly made. Like, really, if you wanted to have an effective Christian movie, hire somebody who knows how to make a movie like all of these are so bad and i i wonder like if people that were into it like a gary Busey or even like the, the screenwriter did they see this and were like oh we're making garbage here <laughs> like <laughs> well here's my thing it's like they've gotten better because i've seen some of the newer stuff that's like really just like makes you vomit this makes you laugh the, the other stuff, the, the better stuff makes you vomit because they're much better at shooting and everything. But my whole thing was like, I guess at this point, they didn't take the money. Instead of spending it on a film, spend it on a couple students sending them to film school, like a couple super Christians, and send them to film school and teach them how to do things. And then you have the money to make the films. I'm assuming that's what they're doing now because they get you know much better films that are like, the dialogue and the script and everything is still fucking dreadful, but at least the shots are good. Yeah, they're a little more polished. You can get some of them in theaters and things like that. Yeah, like I, it's it's absolutely befuddling to me that so many of these movies are just so poorly made. It's it is. It's like you couldn't find anybody, like you, like you said, students. Like I, I probably out of school if you would have offered me a job. If you would have offered me a paying job to make a Christian movie, I probably would have taken it and I could have done a better job out of school. You know, like the, it's like these people get this idea to make this movie and they get so fucking fired up about making this like important Christian movie that they forget that they actually like have to know how to make a movie. <laughs> well, And they clearly have money. That's what irritates me. They have the money to make these and they can't hire competent people. It's true that they have money that they could pump into the stars and then getting these things in video stores. That's a, that's about it. But like they have money. They, they just are placing it in all the wrong places. <laughs> they clearly have good equipment too. And that's kind of what pisses me off. It's just like, there's a reason that I said it looks like a TV movie because when stuff is competent there, it, it does. It looks like it could pass off as a TV movie, you know, when stuff is competent. So, but they, they just don't know what they're doing with the stuff they have. And, I feel like they're accidentally falling into competency. <laughs> well, and I don't understand why subtlety is so lost on these Christian films. I know that they've got a message that they've got to, you know, like this is the main message and everything like that. But you can still make a strong message subtle. I mean, a lot of a lot of films have done that throughout the history. But Christian films as a whole do not do this. And I don't know if that's because they're like, their demographic wants to see the most obnoxious theme pounded into their face. I, I wonder if that's what it is. Like their, their audience doesn't care about subtlety at all. 
It's so true. Yeah, it's that's got to be it. It's got to be like when they want Christian movies, they better be the most fucking Christian movies they can possibly be. Because yeah, how much more effective would a movie like this be if it kind of were sneakily Christian, you know? But because it's not, and they want to just always beat it over your heads, that's why we end up kind of making fun of all these movies. I mean, uh, that'll before we get into the uh, the museum, the last museum ever, Matt Stork. Do you recommend? tribulation from 2000 i don't (laughs) i shocker i think think this movie is just awful i mean it is absolutely hilarious how absurd it is but it is also a miserable watch so um, okay it is it is it is perfect to exist for this podcast but i really don't want to give it to anybody else to watch <laughs> no as someone who absolutely adores gary Busey films and adores really awful christian films this neither hits good gary Busey or awful christian films like it's just missing the whole circle you know how you create the diagram of like gary Busey movies awful Christian films and you stick them together and you find that medium that Steve would have a circle around. It doesn't fit any of that. It's some, yeah, you've got the two circles of the Venn diagram and instead of meeting, they almost bounce off each other (laughs) immediately. (laughs) They're just like North and North pole of like the, uh, the magnet, like, yes, yes, that is what happens here. (laughs) It's not good. And it's more than the like bad dialogue and every bad script and everything like that. It's bad shooting. It's bad lighting. It's just incompetent and annoying. It's annoying at times because I'm not only are the shots incompetent, the lighting's bad, the script's bad, but sometimes there's just gaps of knowledge. Like I'm like, wait, did I miss something? I'll ask Matt. And Matt's like, no, I don't know. I missed it too. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, so yeah, I don't recommend it. Let's go on to the museum. This is the second time I've had to reclaim my property from you. That belongs in a museum. So do you. All right, this is the part of the show where we go out in the film jungle, like Indy, the final one with Matt. We are bringing something back, good or bad, from the film jungle. Matt. Your last episode, I'll let you go first. <laughs> I I think uh, I think the thing I'm going to put in the museum, the physical item, uh, because it just signifies so much about everything that's wrong with this movie, is uh, Gary Busey's outfit as a quote unquote detective. Because it's clearly like a mailman outfit. (laughs) So I think Gary Busey's mailman outfit that should be signifying that he's a detective. uh, But they do not have the budget to get a cop car and or clothes that a detective would wear. Uh, We're going to put that mailman outfit in the museum to just signify all that is wrong with this movie. (laughs) How about them not even providing Gary Busey with a holster? No, nothing. Nothing, nothing. He has to tuck it in the back of his pants. No cop car. I was shook when I saw that they were able to at least afford a light for the car. uh, Because I was convinced that they weren't going to. I'm like, he's dressed like a mailman. No holster, no badge, no car. But they had a light. (laughs) The part in this entire movie that where I just thought, holy shit, this is awful. I can't believe they did this is maybe the funniest part that I text you. I said, Hey Matt, did you put the marker on your hand after you looked inside the goggles? And I didn't hear a response from you. And I said, "Uh Oh, it sounds like you didn't choose the mark. The mark of six, six, six is so fucking funny to me. I don't get it because at the beginning, when the devil was asking everyone to put this mark on, could you imagine walking around and someone going like, Hey man, you're going to join you're going to join the Marcusos or whatever and they show you 666 on your hand i would have laughed yeah it looks like a stamp that you would get from going to like a concert or like the the mark they put on your hand when you're not old enough to drink like it doesn't even look like it would be like signifying of anything it looks like a like a silly stamp you get on the back of your wrist yeah why wouldn't you get like a symbol on the front of your wrist so you could still hide it 
from day to day, but you could flip it around and still show people. Because I get at the end, everyone is looking for the mark and everyone, you know, the majority of the people have the mark. But at the beginning, the mark would have to be hidden. You can't fucking hide 666 on your fist. Like, you know, like the top of your hand. It's absurd. And and this is what I'm talking about. Like this audience hates subtlety. Yes, exactly. This is another example of sort of the whole package. Like there's no subtlety here. That is going to end it for the last Matt and Steve review for the near future. Holding the tears back. This has been a fantastic ride. I hope to have you back for whatever. It doesn't matter. Maybe we can talk about your film when it comes out. Whatever it is. This has been a blast and I will miss you a lot. Same. This has been a quite a long journey. We did a lot of work. You did a lot of work, like getting this thing out there and getting it to people. So I, you know, I really appreciate that. And I've enjoyed chatting with you. Um, it helps kind of doing these big projects with friends. Um, so thanks for hanging. Thanks for talking. Thanks for always making it easy. Uh, and it's, yeah, it's been fun. Uh, but, you know, this chapter may be over, but the fun has only just begun. Yeah, I can, uh, you know, do the best I can with promoting your movie. You know, to go on to like what we're going to what I'm going to do with this podcast. I, I don't know. I am taking a hiatus. I'm going to figure it out because we get a decent amount of downloads. But like, you know, we put a challenge out there. We'll give you a free movie or whatever uh, for every review that you give on iTunes. We got zero and I see the downloads. It doesn't make any sense. Uh, so I'm wondering if this you know, people are coming, they're listening and they're leaving quickly. Uh, they're not hooking on. We have our core audience and I understand that you people are great. And uh, that's why this podcast will continue. I'll figure it out. I think I'm going to do more on YouTube. So look out for that. Uh, I'm going to figure this all out and announce it. But it is a little discouraging doing all this work. I think we've done something really well and just not like not getting the response that I expected at this point in our timeline. So I clearly am not hitting enough doubles, so to speak. Uh, I don't ever expect to hit a home run, but you know, after a while I'm tired of hitting foul balls, if you know what I mean. So uh, I'm going to figure out what to do with this podcast and then I will return. Uh, I think I'm going to do more of it, you know, like three or four people and completely unedited where it's just people talking, but it will return. I just need some time off to rethink things. Yeah, do it. And I, I, I look forward to seeing the next iteration of it. I will be following as a fan and I absolutely won't be writing any reviews for it just to stay in, <laughs> uh, to stay in what we dealt with this whole time. <laughs> I'm kidding. I will obviously be writing reviews and, sharing and everything like that uh with this next iteration because i am very excited to see what it turns out to be yeah i do know one thing i'm gonna do is i collected all the big box vhs's of season one of transformers and i'm gonna make a youtube video of about 15 minutes it's gonna be you know reviewing season one of transformers and boy did we forget a lot because i remember watching the first two episodes on these things and i was like what the fuck? I don't remember that. So that's one of the things. And I think I'm going to lean more towards that way while at the same time doing the exact opposite by having a bunch of people completely unedited. So I want a section that's completely unedited with a few people, maybe four or five people. And I want something just me talking about something completely edited, if you know what I mean. Yeah, that's a, yeah, that sounds great. I, uh, I can't wait to honestly check out both i think that'll be really cool i need the the analog jones name needs to continue on regardless yeah and i think we have way too many core fans to just give up i just think uh you know we need to reach more and a lot of it has to probably do with what we're talking about yeah it is very uh inclusive the this just the vhs culture and everything like that so it, it'll be fun for you to kind of reach out a little bit more and see you know, just all kind of aspects of fandom. Exactly. All right. Well, for the last time, remember to be kind.
definitely be kind. Always remember to be kind. And you always have to. Always, always, always. For this, for your own benefit. Rewind.